To a woodworker who's used to ruler scales divided into sixteenths or thirty seconds of an inch, the scale on a machinist tool, like a caliper, may look a little bit strange. For example, the scale on the body of this caliper is divided into inches and centimeters. Now let's focus on the inches at the top of the main scale for a moment, then we'll talk about the metric. Each inch is divided into ten smaller increments, and each of those is divided into four increments that are smaller yet. So if these are inches, and these are tenths of an inch, what are these? What's a quarter of a tenth of an inch? Twenty-five thousandths. And that is where some woodworkers' brains just shut down. I don't know how well you remember your fractions from school, but a woodworker used to dividing his rule from halves to quarters to eighths to sixteenths to thirty seconds sees a change from tenths to twenty-five thousandths like a big jump. To wrap your brain around the math, try to think of things in terms of decimals, because decimals are easier to add, subtract, and divide. The decimal equivalent of one-tenth of an inch is point one. When you're working with decimals, you can add zeros to the end of a number to convert it into a smaller increment. Point one, or a tenth of an inch, is the same as point one oh, or ten hundredths of an inch, which is the same as point one oh oh, or one hundred thousandths of an inch. Now why would you want to add zeros like that? Because it's difficult to divide point one by four, but point one oh oh is easily divided by four to get point oh two five, or twenty-five thousandths of an inch. Now let's apply that to the scale on our caliper. The inches are divided into ten smaller increments, point one, point two, point three, and so on, up to 1.0 and then on. Those are each divided into four smaller increments, 0 0.025, 0 0.050, 0 0.075, and so on. But what if you need to get really accurate and divide your increments even further? There isn't room to add more lines between each of those small marks. That's where the vernier scale comes in. It's as if the twenty-five marks on that upper scale were squeezed between the smallest marks on your lower scale. Remember, those small marks on that lower main scale represent twenty-five thousandths of an inch. The marks on the vernier scale are those thousandths of an inch, all twenty-five of them. To use the vernier scale, you take your reading with your zero mark. That's your cursor. So imagine your zero mark ended up somewhere between 0.125 and 0.150. To narrow that down to a more precise measurement between those two lines, you'd find the mark on the upper vernier scale that best aligns with the point on the main scale. Doesn't matter which point on the main scale, those numbers are irrelevant for just a moment. The line on the upper scale that matches up best is 10. So add 10 thousandths, or 0 0.010, to the point that your zero cursor has just passed on the main scale, which was 0.125, and you'll have a more precise measurement of 0.135 or 135 thousandths. Want to try another one? Here the zero cursor is just past the 1.025 point. Looking at the vernier scale, we see that the nearest mark that aligns with a point on the main scale is 21. Since those are thousandths, we add 0.021 to our 1.025, and we get 1.046 or 1 and 46 thousandths. Now let's do one more for our viewers who use the metric system. The bottom of the main scale is metric. The large marks are centimeters, and each centimeter is divided into 10 millimeters. That's simple enough. But if you want a finer measurement, you have to work with fractions of a millimeter. And that's what the vernier scale at the bottom is for. The value of this scale isn't marked on my caliper, but it's pretty obvious that these are tenths of a millimeter, or 0.1 millimeters. Now each of those are divided into five finer increments. To determine the decimal equivalent for those marks, I have to divide my 0.1 by 5. So I add a zero, and now I can easily divide 0 0.10 down to 0.02. Therefore, each of the fine marks on my vernier scale represent two hundredths of a millimeter. Now that I understand my scale, let's take a measurement. Here the zero cursor falls just past the mark after the 2. You can call that 21 millimeters or 2.1 centimeters, but we want a finer measurement. The line on the vernier scale that best aligns with the mark on the main scale is just past the 5. That's 52 hundredths of a millimeter, or 0.52. If I add 0.52 to the 21 millimeters I got on the main scale, my final measurement 
is 21.52 millimeters or 2.152 centimeters. Now, if you're a machinist, you probably think this tutorial is silly. Your brain's been trained to switch back and forth between fractions and decimals, and you're used to working with thousandths of an inch or hundredths of a millimeter. But many woodworkers have worked with eighths, sixteenths, and thirty seconds for so long that it just takes us a bit more effort to wrap our brains around your fancy tools. This is the CRB7 router jig system from Empower Tools, and it does just about everything with amazing accuracy due to its clever micro adjuster. It's just one of the many product innovations from this small family owned company. You gotta check them out at the link in the notes below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.